New Montana 3120 or 3121 rear living. The only difference being which refrigerator the RV has equipped in it here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This is the straight replacement for the previous 3160, 3161. This video will apply to both the 3120 and 3121 because they're the same RV. Um, the only difference significantly in terms of layout, there's little touches uh, between the 3160 and this 3120, is that they've basically flipped the living room slide so that the kitchen is on the driver's side, which means all of your windows are finally on the door side. And it's still 35 feet on the Nizzo's. They kept this right at 35 feet. And I love that. That makes us very traveling friendly. It makes it able to get into a lot of places that these big 40 footers can't while still maintaining all the benefits of a beautiful luxury Montana fifth wheel. If you'd like to see if we have one in stock and available, it's very simple. Click the link in the video description that says check for price and availability. You'll see if we have one in stock, how it's equipped, what we're asking, and we don't do hidden dealer fees. We put it right out there. If you don't see it on our site, we're sold out, we're getting more. Montana is the single best selling fifth wheel on the market, so it would be foolish for us to try to stay out of stock with anything for a given time. Fully painted nose up front here. Uh, Keystone owns their own paint shop. It's actually a repurposed diesel pusher shop they bought from Monaco. Um, it's like three, I don't know, 180 or 300,000 square feet. I know it's a big difference. My point is, it's a big facility that does nothing but paint caps. Um, three year structural warranty and warranted for full time living. That's a different thing for most warranties. So let's start with the full time warranty. A lot of people don't realize RV warranties aren't designed for full timing. They, they don't take that into account. That coverage doesn't protect you. Montana does. Now on top of that, they also have the industry's most involved three-year structural warranty. There are different structural warranties out there. They're not created equally. Montana, well, Keystone really, not just Montana, covers more. So here in the pass-through, you look above us, you can see all the aluminum skeleton. You can see that it's got thicker beams on it, not like two by twos or whatever. Uh, your central vacuum system dumps down in here. You can see a dedicated heat vent into the underbelly and not carpeted flooring. Uh, that way you're not going to have potential like, you know, musty moldy issues. Heated, protected docking station in here. Montana's are and have been zero degree rated since 05. Um, all of the, uh, uh, since this has a constructed floor, not a laminated floor, this is one of the, uh, the, the fallacy points. I don't, I don't like laminated floors and big fifth wheels like this personally. They do have certain benefits. They are lighter weight, but you can't, uh, protect the water lines as well. Um, Montana's, the water lines actually run through the two by three longitudinal floor studs that are set, uh, 12 inches on center. Um, that means that they are protected, they're insulated. Someone says, well, what if a line burst? And the question is, or the answer is, yeah, good question. It really just hasn't happened. Because it's not the lines that are the weak point, it's the fitting. So Montana keeps the fittings above the floor where they have more heating and protection. That's part of the air ways that they're able to achieve their cold camp ratings. Standard, bigger, 16-inch radial tires. You've got the um, uh, road armor, shock dampening uh, suspension, and pin box system so that you do have both uh, lateral and vertical shock dampening. Uh, the roof line you see up there, that wrap over roof line. Well, you've got double arched roof trusses and uh, that provides even insulation throughout the RV. It's full walk on, of course, but uh, you've also got an aluminum shroud that goes down the length of the RV where the wall meets the roof. It's just an extra sheet of aluminum that helps keep everything lashed together long term. That, you don't need to do that. Most, uh, I don't know many RVs to do that. You definitely don't have to do that for the original owner. Uh, the average person only keeps an RV for two and a half to three years, and that's not my opinion. That's a statistical fact. Um, you know, something, even something like this. Now, Montana's, maybe they keep them a little longer, three or four years, but this is built for the second, for the third owner, so that you have just the highest ratings of quality and satisfaction going on here, which is one of the reasons this is it has earned several accolades. This has earned uh, the uh, DSI Award, Quality Circle Award, several years in a row. It's also recently, uh, Keystone was named Best in Fifth Wheels and Toy Haulers, according to uh, Trailer Life's uh, recent uh, like uh, Reader's Choice polls. 
two inch receiver hitch on the back here. That gives us the ability to add bike racks and whatnot. You may have noticed there's a second air conditioner on this. That's an option. There is a, uh, a few uh, pieces of optional, I guess I should say there are, excuse me, a few pieces of optional equipment present here. So as always, visit the link in the video description to make sure the RV that we have in stock is the exact one you're looking for. Now, twin power awnings, that's something that's standard on here. You don't have to really pay extra for that. They both have LED lighting at the base. They're both tilt adjustable. Um, this has six point hydraulic auto leveling. Montana has hydraulic leveling in slides, except for the bedroom, which is electric. And High Country has electric leveling in slides. There's a little bit of a difference there. The biggest like mental difference I can give you is that High Country Montana is weight and price sensitive. Just plain big Montana is uh, uh, feature sensitive, you know? So outside TV station here, it actually does have a swing out arm, but I don't want to leave that open too far. You will notice though that all baggage doors have slam latches and uh, magnet hold backs. Now what's neat, even though this is, this is not a big door, it is still fully insulated though, so that you're not freezing at your dinette, your feet will get cold, and it still has double magnet latches. They still go all the way here. Now this has the zero G more ride uh, sturdy stable super step system. There's a lot of S's in there. Uh, what I mean by that is you can literally just stick this thing out perpendicular to the ground and it doesn't fall. This is not the system that's going to fall down and hit you and smash you in the head. This is the safety one. Like I said before, you're not going to get killed putting the steps down in your Montana. No drain bramage, if you will. So entry doors. This has not just a wider 30 inch entry door, but also a six and a half foot tall entry door. It's residential height because this is more of a residential RV. And that's really the coolest thing about Montana's, I think, is they took the best parts of a fifth wheel, of residential living, and of diesel pushers, interestingly, and kind of put them all together. And you'll see a lot of those diesel pushers uh, touches as we step inside. Now, someone's probably going to tell me, you're going to have to turn in your man card, boy. But this just had, I mean, it's just got a really pretty interior. It has just got some dynamite looks to it. And compared to even to one generation of Montana ago, the, the everything, I mean, everything was touched and, and just very subtly altered. But the culmination of all those little drops in the bucket has created just a, a rainstorm of awesome sauce here. It starts right at the top. Remember I was talking about diesel pusher features in a uh, uh, towable RV. The ceiling fixtures, that couple's dinette, a few other things we'll get to. That's sort of what I mean here. Now, um, I'm not using liar liar cam uh, pants on fire uh, camera lenses here. If you see someone using a fisheye lens on a video like this, they're lying to you. They're deceiving you. It's not even what the product looks like. They're trying to trick you into selling something. I would rather just give you straight information and let you make a decision. Um, up top here, you can put a third air conditioner on Montana. That being said, I don't know why you'd want to. When you add the second air conditioner like we've done to this 3120 here, um, you get dual 15,000, so a total of 30,000 centralized BTU air conditioning that are both whisper ducted. You have one in the back, one in the front. They're both quiet, cool air conditioners, which means 70 to 90% quieter. And here's how you can tell if you got the right air conditioner in a big fifth wheel like this. Uh, look where you see uh, the air conditioner on the outside, then peek on the inside. Like right here, there's those are your air returns, those boxes on the left and the right. If you can see the square, you can hear the air, and the square being the actual air return of the uh, air conditioner in the center of the RV. You don't see that here, it's quiet. Now you've got the uh, air traffic controller, uh, overhead uh, like indirect track lighting effectively, and that is like the perfect night light, uh, and it's also the great way to be able to see the refrigerator to uh, get to the uh, leftovers at night. Um, just even the little touches. Like I see a lot of very, quote, high level fifth wheels, and they just use like flat panel cabinetry in here. This is like staring you in the face all day, the kitchen island. So they didn't neglect it. They gave it all the nice look and feels of everything else in here. And you see those face mounted outlets. So you've always got plenty of plugs everywhere. We'll come back to the kitchen in just a minute here. Dual posing six and a half foot tall super slides make this very large and in charge. Again, Montana being the number one selling fifth wheel out there. Now, um, we carry a lot of different fifth wheels here at Halet RV, and they all have nice points, absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the very head-to-head uh, -head counterpart to something like this from our Jayco line would be a North Point at Highland Ridge. Uh, this is, 
Uh, you've kind of got uh, the open range, and then you've got the open range 3X, sort of like above, below, skirting around something like a Montana. They never really directly butt heads, but they do share a lot of floor plans. Um, this is, there's, it's not really a king size, but I call it like a, a king size hide -a bed in terms of uh, RV hide -a beds You can see it's a little bit wider. It's got a little bit more of a, a nice residential sort of feel. All the cushions are contoured a little bit like you'd have at home. Um, folds out into a big trifold hide -a bed And notice that all of the windows open for ventilation. And you've got, this is again, the big difference between this 3120 and the previous 3160 is now all the windows are on the, uh, well, not correct, but other side, the, the door side of the RV. And I love those indirect light fixtures even, uh, well, not no, indirect, but light fixtures directly above your super slide seating over here. So this is a power reclining uh, theater seat. You've got a removable center uh, pontoon style armrest. You do need 110 power for that power recline to work, but it does have heat and massage. Uh, so those are uh, fancy looking features right there. Now this is one of those diesel pusher style dinettes. That's one of those diesel things I was talking about. So uh, most of the time, it's just the two of you. You only need two chairs because you're, the other two chairs for the table are almost always in the way and you have to deal with where to store them. So Montana, they, uh, they overcame that problem by giving you a pair of these decor matching fold-down chairs. Now, a couple cool things here. One, it looks exactly like the other chairs, especially when it's folded down. You can't tell which one is the guest chair and which one is the normal chair, so no one feels like they're sitting at the kids' table. Now, if it is just the two of you and you want to plug in your phones or whatever, you've got this nice little uh, hardwood-topped uh, little table stand shelf next to you here. And below that is actually where the outside TV hides. But right here, you have your pop-up power post. You'll find two more of those in the kitchen. Um, so you've got outlets and USB plugs and just stuff everywhere. So if it's just two of you, this is fine. But again, if we're going to have guests or you need a little bit more room to do something, there's just a handy little lever right over here. You just pull out, whole table extends. It's a nice little telescopic, easy extension table. That'll give you a little bit extra room. That's pretty great. You need a little bit more still? There you go. So now we've got a real comfortable four-person dinette. And notice there's no pedestal under this so that you don't have to smash your knees on it all the time. Like, I got long legs. And when I sit down and relax, I slouch, I have bad posture, so my legs stick out and I kick everybody across the table, or I'm always kicking the uh, pedestal under that. Well, I don't have that problem here. And then it gets a little bit better. For easy get up and go travel, you got the chair buddy. You got this little lever that flops down and it keeps those chairs from flopping around and it works like a charm. You can see it worked to get it here. And then for more of like a work camping thing, you've got a little sort of desk space going on over here that you can uh, pop up whenever you need to get to extra storage in there. Um, so, I mean, this dinette just does everything. You've got all the windows all over the door side here. They have uh, roll down diesel pusher style night shades. I don't think Montana was the first to do it, but they were first to make a big deal of it and put it in their stuff pretty much across the board at this class and price point. Um, you know, that's the, that's the thing is, you got to compare different things, you know. You have to understand how they relate and compare to one another because every RV is the best for a different reason. I believe that wholeheartedly. And there are certainly other great RVs out there. Obviously, we carry more than just Montana's here at Halet RV because they all have awesome features and qualities. Let's go into the kitchen here. We're going to start with the island, which, first of all, it's just big. It's really big, and that gives you lots of useful prep space. Solid surface counters, of course. Recessed stainless sink, but you've got one oversized farm sink and then one normal sink. So you've got all kinds of different prep options here. You've got drawers built right onto the face of the island. You can see a, uh, a built-in wastebasket space down there and uh, just all, all kinds of storage everywhere. But then you turn around. <laughs> turn around. You got six drawers here on the, uh, the kitchen area directly behind the island. Now, most of the time, where you see an oven, a stovetop, and a microwave in an RV, you're lucky to get any sort of countertop or prep space on either side of it. You've got a symmetrical kitchen arrangement here, and what's really neat is this, it's like a new uh, automobile where those side cabinets on each side of that convection microwave oven actually point inward, and it's got a very cook-centric wraparound. And that's a full tile wall. 
that is not like a wallpaper. You can reach out and touch that. It'll, you know, clinkety-tink against your fingers and your wedding rings and whatnot. That's a technical term, by the way. Clinkety-tink. Do look, look that up. You won't find it. That is uh, nerdism number 37. You can look that up in my definitionary, which does not exist. Sealed burner stovetop. Very residential, themed, and styled again. Now, um... Again, this is the only area where a 3120 uh, and a 3121 vary. Uh, this is a gas electric refrigerator. And unless you decide, it, it, it's, and it's fine, I don't care if you disagree, but uh, there are reasons that we have really hard shifted away from residential refrigerators. Uh, we don't like their service record, first of all, because they're not made to be bounced down the road on uh, like a, uh, in a towable RV. Towable RVs don't have these like air ride suspensions of a diesel pusher, so they don't they don't ride very well in here. If you're going to park an RV and never move it, they're okay. But even then, what if you lose power? Most towable RVs don't have a generator with an automatic uh, startup in the event of power loss. But you know what this refrigerator has? An automatic changeover. If you uh, lose power, it'll click over from electric to gas, and you're going to be just fine. And I love that very seamlessly almost hidden pantry next to that refrigerator. And by the way, it doesn't matter which fridge you pick. They're both 18 cubic foot. So we decided we'd opt for the one with the better service record and the one that, uh, you know, will protect you in the event that you're away from your RV and you'll lose power. Um, the uh, 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 pantry, that's the word I was looking for. Kick this sucker open right here, give you a nice look at that. Uh, motion sensing lighting in here is nice too, but what I like is how it's not terribly, terribly bright. It's enough to be able to see, but it's not enough to like blind you or anything like that. Now, some floor plans will use this cabinet space here sometimes as like a uh, washer dryer prep space. This has a more traditional bedroom washer dryer setup. Um, I do like the little entry bureau here though. I love that they gave you an entry stand with outlets and uh, a pantry. Some brands give you one or the other. I like the split because I think it, it can work for about anybody. You can make this work. One of the important things I want to talk about, I should have mentioned when I was talking about the, uh, the air conditioner earlier, more that tile walls, holy cow, is that uh, black switch at the bottom right there. That's your max air wall controller for your uh, fan here in the kitchen area. You don't have to, you know, jab up there with a broom to turn that thing on. It is amazing how many RVs still miss that. Uh, over here, oh, oh, this is another thing too. Control, oh, no, you know what, I'm sorry. I'm jumping around a lot, but this is important. You see where the island is? You see where the refrigerator is? The refrigerator clears the island. You can get to this fridge in transit, and that is awesome. The other thing you can get to when the slides are closed is you can get to half of the dinette. You can't get to the whole thing, but you can get to one of the chairs. So you do have a little bit of a spot where you can sit down, uh, have a sandwich in transit, get to your fridge or whatever. You can pack the fridge before you leave somewhere without having to bump slides, which is really nice. This is a fairly pack em up friendly floor plan. By the way, right in the entry door, it's hard to see, but you've got a, uh, a shade built right into this window right here. Uh, maybe you can get a somewhat of an idea of it there. Okay, so like I was saying, control panel, hidden away from the grandkids. Like, if I didn't show you where it was, you'd have a hard time finding it. Which is funny, because our actual RV checking guy had a hard time finding it. Love those overhead lights. And they, I mean, look at how much light is cast up there from those. It's, you don't appreciate it until they're off. And then you're like, oh, wow, that really does make a difference. Uh, walking past a nice little coat closet right when you walk in the door. The Montana upper deck is generally very standardized. You see this bathroom used quite a bit with great frequency, and I'm happy for it. It does a lot of things well. So let me step inside here. So the bathroom door is a little different. It actually just kind of melts away, as you see, so you don't have to go backwards down the steps to get to it. Now, I'm standing in here, and there is plenty of room between me and the toilet. You've got lots of leg room in a Montana. You have, uh, you know, the same raised panel hardwood cabinet doors in here, and that is deceptively deep. If you actually look around the corner, you can see, oh, yeah, that, that does look pretty big. And there's your hidden hinge uh, cabinetry, even here in the bathroom. Now, someone's going to say, yeah, but um, I, I can't really fit through there. You just flip the traveling lock when you get to your destination, leave the door over there, and ta-da! Now everybody can fit in this seamless one-piece fiberglass shower. I guess seamless in one piece is a little bit uh, department of redundancy, uh, department, redundant. <laughs> Corner uh, seat over here. Now between the vaulted roofing and that skylight, even without it, I mean, this is a very tall person friendly uh, bathroom here. We've got a big, 
Max Air vent fan with another wall controller up here. And I love this like uh, uh, <laughs> circus freak mirror. This is a big giant fun house mirror right here is what it is. And that leads us right down to the uh, one piece sink and countertop. If you get real close and you touch it, very noticeable when you touch it, it's, it's a one piece molded fixture. You don't have to go, uh, there's no like seams that, you know, with potential caulking that could fade or anything like that. The triple drawers and the extra space for a little wastebasket in the bathroom down there is a nice touch. And I love the very, it's, it's shallow, but it's perfect little toiletry um, cabinet right here. And it still leaves room for a hand towel by it. This is an extremely well executed bathroom. Not to be outdone by an extremely well uh, executed bedroom. Walk around the corner up here, we've got two light switches. One is for the main cabin. The other is actually for up front here in the closet, which is nice, you have an actual lit closet in this. 70 by 80 king bed in here, that might be an option. That being said, uh, you're gonna be really hard pressed to find a dealer stocking a Montana without a king bed. I can't even, um, I can't even imagine that. Um, the uh, bed slide of a Montana. They do something really nice here, guys. They actually have side stands uh, right in the slide box and power outlets, household outlets, directly in the slide box. Because CPAP users, you know what I'm talking about. People, you know, and even for me, charging a phone, that is nice. Eight foot wide, full front storage closet. I like the shoe organizer shelves at the bottom here. It's funny how many people, it's not just mom, it's mom, dad, everyone. They look at that and go, oh, wow. Oh, wow, look at that. I mean, because it's useful. You can really pack stuff in there. Now, over here, if you choose to, you can do a combo or a stackable washer dryer. That being said, less than 2% of people ever will install one of those, and only 50% of them will ever be happy they did. Bedroom TV, standard. Uh, it can pivot out, though you don't really need it to. They sort of did an overkill thing there, but I'll take overkill over underkill any day. But I do like how it's beveled downward. And I got like a weird glare on my lens. I think I got some snow on it from the outside. It's probably been there the whole time and I just haven't been watching. I don't really look at the camera a lot, so sorry about that. And the dresser here, nice little hardwood top, plenty of room for some extra, you know, pants or sweaters or what have you here. And obviously a sliding privacy door for the master bedroom so that, you know, people aren't walking in on you or anything like that. So, there you have it. Uh, give us, I should probably turn some lights back on because it looks like crap in here. Uh, give us a call, 800-256-5196, Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Take care, stay safe, have fun, happy camping everyone. And if you have feedback, positive or constructive, please drop me a note in the uh, YouTube video description there. If there's something else you'd like to see, uh, you know, my, my tours are greatly guided by consumer feedback. Um, you know, and hey, if we just did a good job, then please tell us. And if you are in the market, all we ask, guys, is for the fair opportunity to earn your business when you are ready. So take care, stay safe, have fun, happy camping, everyone.